Hi everyone, welcome back to JB Comms. Today we gonna discuss inspection and testing practices. The first topic we gonna discuss here is risk based inspection. It is risk is the combination of probability of failure and consequences of failure. Combining the assessment of likelihood that means probability of failure and consequence of failure are essential elements of risk based inspection. The main document for risk based inspection is API recommend practice 580. It is essential that all RBA assessment to be thoroughly documented in accordance with API recommended practice 580, clearly defining all the factors contributing to both the likelihood that means probability and consequences of piping failure. All degradation mechanisms to be considered in this. What are the preparations to be there before the inspection? Safety precautions are important. Okay. The second point. Procedure for segregating shall be taken before piping system is opened and before some types of external inspection. The section of piping to be opened shall be isolated from all the source of ignition, harmful liquids, everything. There should be permit to work system in place. Protective equipment shall be worn when required. NDT testing equipment is subject to operating facilities safety rules. The inspector should be familiar with the prior inspection results and repairs. In short, they should review all the history before doing the inspection. Here we're going to discuss about specific types of corrosion and cracking inspections. Injection points, dead legs, CUI, soil to air interfaces, services specific as localized corrosion, erosion and corrosion erosion, environmental cracking, corrosion under deposit, fatigue cracking, creep cracking, brittle fracture and freeze damage. These are the different types of uh, corrosion and crackings. For that piping systems are susceptible to. The first item is injection points. It is should be considered as a separate inspection circuit. It is subjected to accelerated or localized corrosion from normal to abnormal operating conditions. For injection points, inspection must be conducted for a minimum of 12 inches or 3 pipe diameters, whichever is greater for the upstream limit and downstream is the second change in flow direction past the injection point or 25 feet beyond the first change, whichever is less. This is very important. There will be a question definitely based on this. Preferred method of inspection may be beneficial to remove piping spools for an internal visual. It is the injection point should be considered as a very serious piping circuits. Additionally, measure and record thickness at all the CMLs within the circuit. In short, it should be considered as a separate inspection circuits and to be approached very seriously. Deadlocks. Deadlocks are considered as the most critical threat in oil and gas industry piping. Monitor wall thickness or selected deadlocks including both the significant end and the connection to active line. Normally deadlocks are two types. One is no flow and other one is less flow. Both should be considered separately. It is always preferable to remove or delete the dead legs from the system. The next one is insulated piping system susceptible to corrosion under insulation. There are 11 areas captured here. Areas exposed to mist or spray from cooling water towers. Areas exposed to steam vents. Areas exposed to dilute system. Area subjected to process spills, ingress of moisture or acid vapors. Carbon steel piping system including those insulated for PP, personal protection, operating between minus 4 degree to 120 degree. 
carbon steel piping system that normally operate in service above 120 degree but are intermittent service that's important dead legs and attachments that protrude from insulated piping and operate at different temperature Osnetic stainless steel piping system operating between 65 degree to 204 degree vibrating piping system that have a tendency to inflict damage to insulating jacket jacketing steam traced piping system that may experience tracing leaks piping system with deteriorated coating and or wrapping another question we can expect in this category is corrosion under insulation is common locations on piping system susceptible to corrosion under insulation there are nine categories captured under this all penetrations or branches in insulation jacketing system such as dead legs pipe hangers and other supports valves and fittings bolted piping shoes steam tracer tubing penetrations okay the next one Termination of insulation at flanges and other piping components. Third one, damaged or missing insulation jacketing. Fourth one, insulation jacketing scans located on the top of horizontal piping or improperly lapped or sealed insulation jacketing. Next one, termination of insulation in a vertical pipe. Chalking that has hardened, has separated or missing. Bulges or staining of insulation or jacketing system or missing bands. Low point in piping system that have a non breach in the insulation system, including low points in long and supported piping runs. Last one carbon or low alloy steel flanges, bolting, and other components under insulation in high alloy piping system. These are the nine categories captured under this tag. Soil to air interface. This is for buried piping without adequate cathodic protection shall be included in scheduled in external piping inspections. Inspection at grade should check for coating damage, bare pipe and pit depth measurements. If the buried piping is uncovered, it's very important Consideration should be given to excavating 6 inches to 12 inches deep to assess potential or hidden corrosion damage. At concrete wear and asphalt wear interfaces of buried piping without cathodic protection should look for evidence of deterioration and damage. If such a condition exists on piping system over 10 years old may be necessary to inspect for corrosion beneath the surfaces. The next we are going to discuss about localized corrosion. An FAT inspection program includes the following three elements. An inspector knowledgeable of services and where corrosion is likely to occur. Second one, extensive use of uh, NDT. Third one, communication from operating personnel when process upsets occur that may affect corrosion rates. There are nine examples where localized corrosion can be occur. First one, downstream of injection points and upstream of production separators. Dew point corrosion in condensating system. Unanticipated acid or caustic carryover from process into non-alloyed piping system which are not PWHD. Ammonium salt condensation location in high power process streams. Mixed phase flow and turbulent areas in acid systems. Next one, mixed grades of carbon steel piping in hot corrosive oil service. Example, A53 and API 5L pipes which are non-silicon killed steel pipes. It may corrode more higher rate than silicon killed steel pipes like A106. Under deposit corrosion in slurries, crystallizing solutions or cork producing fluids. Chloride carryover in catalytic reformer generation system. Last one, hot spot corrosion on piping with the external heat tracing. The next one is erosion and erosion corrosion. This is mainly because of the fluid velocity. Erosion is defined as removal of surface material by action of numerous individual impacts of solid or liquid particles. It can be characterized by grooves, rounded holes, waves, etc. Erosion usually occurs in areas of turbulent flow such as changes in direction or downstream of control valves. 
A combination of corrosion and erosion results in significantly greater metal loss with the corrosion. There are five listed areas to inspect erosion. Downstream of control valves, downstream of orifices, downstream of pump discharge, at any point of flow direction change like elbows, downstream of piping configuration such as wells, thermo wells, etc. that produce turbulence particularly in velocity sensitive systems such as ammonium hydrosulfide and sulfuric acid systems. The next one is environmental cracking. Stress corrosion crackings are considered as environmental cracking. Some systems may be susceptible to environmental cracking due to upset process condition, corrosion rate insulation, anticipated condensation, etc. Examples are given for chloride stress corrosion cracking, polythionic acid corrosion cracking, caustic stress corrosion cracking, amine stress corrosion cracking, etc. When stress corrosion cracking is susceptible, schedule a supplementary inspections for that, such as NDT, PT, WFMT, UT, etc. If environmental cracking is observed during the inspection of pressure vessel, you should give extra care for the piping associated with that pressure vessels. It should be considered as susceptible to SCC. The next one is fatigue cracking. It is related to excessive cyclic stress. The onset of low cycle fatigue cracking is often directly related to the number of heat up and cool down cycles experienced. Excessive piping system vibration also can cause high cycle fatigue damage. Preferred NDT method for this are PT or MT. The next one is creep cracking. Creep is it depends on time, temperature and stress. If excessive temperature are encountered, mechanical property and microstructure changes in metals also may take place, which may permanently weaken the equipment. The NDT methods are PT, MT, UT and radiographic testing. In the picture you can see the brittle fracture, the morphology of brittle fracture. Carbon, low alloy and other ferritic steels may be susceptible to brittle fracture. Usually not a concern with the thin wall piping. Most brittle fractures occur on first application of a particular stress. It's very important. Special attention should be given to low alloy steels. Now we are going to discuss about different types of inspection as per APA 570. Internal issue inspection, thickness measurement inspection, external visual inspection, vibrating piping inspection and supplemental inspections. Internal visual inspection as you know it's not normally performed on piping. Thickness measurement inspections are you know CMLs inspections. External visual inspections performed to determine the condition of outside of the piping. Inspection may be made when the piping system is in service in this case. Inspection may be conducted in accordance with the checklist of APA recommended practice 574 in this case. Inspection shall include surveys for condition of piping hangers and supports, bellows, expansion joints, everything should be considered in this. Inspection should examine piping system for presence of field modification or temporary repairs in this case. Inspector should be alert to presence of any component that is not suitable for long term operations during this inspection. In some cases, this inspection may be conducted by some operation qualified operating or maintenance personnel with the approval of inspector. For vibrating piping and line movement surveillance, operating personnel should report these types of vibration or line movement to inspection personnel for assessment. TML is an old term, now it is CML, condition monitoring locations. This should be monitored during each and every inspections. Now we can discuss about the TML selection or CML selection. This CML selection, the inspector should take into account the patterns of corrosion that would be expected during its service life. A number of corrosion processes common to refining and petrochemical units are relatively uniform in nature, resulting in a fairly constant rate of pipe wall reduction independent of location within the piping circuit. Inspector must use their knowledge of the process unit to optimize the TML or CML selection for each circuit. More TML shall be selected if higher potential for creating a safety or environmental emergency in the event of a leak that means consequence of failure is high. Higher expected 
or experienced corrosion rates, higher potential for localized corrosion, more complexity in terms of fittings, branches, dead legs, injection points, etc., and higher potential for CUA. CMLs can be reduced if low potential for creating a safety environment, which means uh, consequence of failure is less, relatively non corrosive piping system, long straight run piping system. And CML can be eliminated if extremely low potential, extremely low consequence of failure and non-corrosive systems are demonst demonstrated by history or similar service. The next thing what we can discuss is thickness measurement methods. UT measuring instruments are the most accurate means of obtaining thickness measurements on pipe larger than 1 inch. If it is less than 1 inch, it's the preferable method is profile RT. When UT measurements are taken above 150 Fahrenheit, instruments, couplings and procedures should be used according to that. It should be vigilant in improper instrument calibration, external coating or scale, excessive surface roughness, subsurface material flows, etc. testing of piping system. Pressure tests are not normally conducted as a part of routine inspection. If conducting, it should be in accordance with ASME B31.3 process piping. The test fluid shall be water unless there is a possibility of damage due to freezing damage. In either case, another suitable non-toxic liquid may be used. If the liquid is flammable, its flash point should be at least 120 degree Fahrenheit or greater. For 300 series austenitic stainless steel, normally portable water is preferred. If portable water is not available, water having very low chlorate level should be used for this to avoid beating and MIC. For sensitized austenitic steel piping subject to polythionic stress corrosion cracking, consideration should be given to using alkaline water solution. A pneumatic test may be used when it is impractical to hydrostatically stress due to temperature, structural or process limitation. When pressure tests will exceed the set pressure of the safety valve, the valve should be removed, blanketed off or the disc held down with the test clamp. If block valves used to isolate a piping system, the test pressure should not exceed the permissible seat pressure. Material verification and traceability. It should be in accordance with API recommend practice 578. During repairs or alterations where alloy material is required to maintain pressure containment, the inspector shall verify that installation of new materials is consistent with the selected or specified construction materials. You should have a thorough reading of API recommend practice 578 for this certification exam. Components identified during this verification that do not meet the acceptance criteria of the PMI testing program would be targeted for replacement. The owner or user and the piping inspector in consultation with the corrosion specialists shall establish a schedule for replacement of those components. Next is inspection of control valves. Normally, the thickness measurements are not routinely taken on valves in piping circuits. Body of valves that are exposed to steep temperature cycling should be examined periodically. If gate valves are known to be are suspected of being exposed to corrosion or erosion, the extra care should be given for these types of valves. The valve inspections should be conducted in accordance with APA standard 598. Critical check valves should be visually and internally inspected to ensure that they will stop flow reversals. The normal visual inspection method would include ensure the flapper is free of move, the flapper stop should not have excessive wear, the flapper nut should be secured to the flapper bolt to avoid backing off in service. Inspection of weld in service. Normally, inspection of piping weld quality is accomplished as a part of requirement for new construction, repairs or alterations. When preferential weld corrosion is noted, 
Additionally, in same circuit or system should be examined for corrosion. Normally for small diameter piping, RT profile examination may be used. Environmental cracking shall be assessed by the piping engineer. If noted, imperfections are the result of original weld fabrication, inspection or engineering analysis is required to assess the impact of weld quality on piping integrity. The analysis includes first one inspector judgment, certified welding inspector judgment, piping engineer judgment and FFS. 10 issues are listed to consider when assessing the quality of existing wells. In many cases, it is not appropriate to use the, the conditions explained in ASME B31.3 as that is intended to apply to new construction on sampling basis. In some, some cases, the weld will perform satisfactorily in service after being hydro tested. Inspection of flanged joints. <clears throat> the marking on a representative sample of newly installed fasteners and gasters should be examined to determine whether they meet the material specifications. Also, please note whatever I am explaining here, not only in this, this inspection of flanged joints, all all through these presentations I'm not explaining everything because it's require a deep reading of API 570 code what I did is I just mentioned each and every topic and to be covered and I'm giving a guidance in which way you have to approach this API 570 code hope you understand in the next session we will discuss about frequency and extension of inspections and inspection data evaluation analysis and recording. Stay tuned. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel, JP Concepts, and press the bell icon. Bye bye.